So something that I love to do is Google the daily rituals of my favorite author, scientist and artist. This most likely comes from the belief that if one redesigns their life, to be similar to their favorite artist, one could become like them. However, something that I learned by reading about these prolific people is that the way they plan their days differs greatly. If we, for example, look at the wake up time of famous writers, we can see that this lies anytime between 4 a.m., such as Haruki Murakami, and 2 p.m., Charles. Bukowski. Thus the details of your day do not matter, but having a moment every day where you create something makes all the difference. So hi, I'm Charlotte Frasa, a third year PhD student in computational neuroscience. And today I want to take you along in planning my 2023 and hopefully help you to plan yours a little bit as well. So something that I like to do is actually not focus on goals, but focus on systems. So at the end of the year, I kind of review the systems that I had in place the previous year and try to make updates and see if I can improve them such that I would in the ideal case reach the goals that I have set for myself. Because as James Clear said, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And I really agree with this. I think we sometimes can set really lofty goals, but our goals oftentimes don't really depend on us, but can also depend a lot on outside forces. Whereas if we set systems, we usually ensure that at least the lowest parts of our goals should be met if we keep on following the system that we have set. So how does one go about to setting these kind of systems? So a book I read lately was the 12 week year, I recommend by the way. And in this book, they kind of go over the idea that if you want to set your goals, you need to set them more in the immediate future. And I kind of extend this idea to if you want to set your systems, you kind of need to look more to the immediate future and not a year from now. So what they do in the book is they go over this method of how to set your goals and systems for 12 weeks, such that you may get the goals that you would normally set for one year in 12 weeks. So there are three steps in this method that I will go over. So step one is to just think of the things that you would like to have achieved in the next 12 weeks. So you can select anywhere between one or three goals. So one of the goals I, for example, have is to write a blog post every week on my website, which is also a link down below. So I've created this website about a year ago, I think, and I've set this goal many times that I wanted to write a blog post every week about something related to computational neuroscience or the way I study. Kind of similar to this YouTube channel, but a little bit mo more focused on computational neuroscience, I think. But what I kind of realized over the last year is that even though I set the goals, I haven't, I didn't really set the systems that would allow this goal to be accomplished. So after you decided your priority or your goal, you can go to step two, which is called backcasting. So backcasting is a planning method that starts with defining a desirable future and then works backwards to identify policies and programs that will connect that specified future to the present. The fundamental question of best backcasting asks, if we want to attain a certain goal, what actions must be taken to get there? So I'm gonna take you over how I do uh, backcasting and I'm gonna use this board from Miro. So Miro is this website that allows you to use all these different kind of boards and planning strategies and I've been really enjoying using them. So as you can see, this is the entire overview of the method. So they really put it down in tiny sections. So I'm gonna take you over each step and hopefully you can learn something. So the first step that you want to do is to define your future. So in this case, the future that I want to have is I want to have 12 blog posts at the end of 12 weeks. Then the second step, based on your goal, you want to think of positive decisions you could make that could help you accomplish this goal. And you want to think of negative decisions or situation that would disallow you to get this goal. So for example, a negative development for me that I noticed last year is not having enough time. Another negative thing that could happen is like ideas. If I don't have enough ideas to write about, that would definitely disallow me to these blog posts. So a positive driver for me is to, for example, work on it on a set time. So work time to schedule like I said work time. Also by the way you can select all these background colors so I selected this palette because I think this palette is really beautiful. So another positive thing that I could do that would allow me to write every single week is to have deadlines 
to be honest, if I have a deadline, for me that works really well. I know for some people that doesn't work that well, but for me it works quite well. And the last thing is also to read every week something that I could write about as well. So to read interesting papers or to try to take some more courses on computational neuroscience and these kind of things. So the last thing you would then do is to really try to visualize if you start from having written 12 blog posts in the future and then work your way backwards through your life in these 12 weeks and they have this visual representation with a timeline but I actually also just like to do it by closing my eyes and imagining the future and then working my way backwards but so for example I wrote every Monday that's a positive thing that happened just before then something negative that happened I went to a party and or it's not negative but I didn't have enough time to write my blog post by doing this I think you actually really get a sense of what needs to be done to get to the place that you want and a second thing is that you will also become really realistic of the things that could happen because a lot of times the reason that we don't get to our goals or we don't have our systems correctly in place is that we don't like to imagine a negative future or a future that's not optimal but I think by being really realistic about the things that could happen the chances of you actually reaching the future goals that you want um, increase by many folds. So then step three is to really design your systems. So you've now made your goal really clear, you've really thought about the future and all the things that could occur. So the third step is to make your systems that would really allow you to reach to your goals. So the thing I like to do when I'm designing my system is actually to design my environment. So the way I like to think of designing your environment is designing your environment in time, space and with technology, which is also a form of space, but I will keep that separate. So the first thing I do is design my environment in time. So for example, for my environment in time, if I want to write my blog post every week, I have to have scheduled time blocks throughout the week that where I will be writing this blog post. So for example, I would time block certain periods in the week that would allow me to write. So that's my design in time. So the next one is to design your environment. So for example, um, if I want to write, I would need like a good space to write. So I I like to do it at home at my desk and I kind of set up the ideal environment for me to be able to write and another um, design choice I like to make for environment is like your sound environment so I usually also pick like a good playlist for example or a certain soundtrack that really gets me in that mood for writing and then to design your technology so personally I like this the most to kind of redesign all the technology that you use so I remove all the apps that are not conductive for uh, me writing in this case and I add apps that I think are conductive. So apps that I use for writing are Notion, for example. I also use a Pomodoro timer to time myself when I'm writing. And that's almost it. I don't need that much for uh, writing. And the thing I liked most actually about the 12 week year system is the reflection period at the end. So what people usually do is they only reflect in January, for example, and set New Year's resolutions. But by having a 12 week system or even a four week system, like the amount of weeks doesn't really matter but you have more periods in the year where you are re-reflecting on the decisions you have made. So sometimes what I've noticed is that throughout the year the kind of goals or the kind of things that I want actually fluctuates quite a lot. So for example maybe during summer I'm more interested in sports exercise being outside whereas in winter maybe I'm more interested in being with family cooking and enjoying studying for example and I think these fluctuations are actually kind of fine it's just part of being human but I also I think it's good to be aware of how you are changing throughout time and so yeah these were my tips for setting systems and goals for 2023 if you have any lofty goals for 23 i would be really curious or if you're one of those people that doesn't set new year's resolutions i would also be really curious as to your reason why and otherwise see you next week bye